Calling to order the Municipality of Monroeville's Citizens Night and Agenda Setting Meeting for October 7th, 2021. It is 7.05 p.m. If we'd all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. We do have a quorum this evening, all of councils in attendance uh, with the exception of Councilwoman Gatos. One quick announcement, uh, it being uh, the season, uh, October, so trick-or-treating. Uh, trick-or-treating will be Sunday, October 31st from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, we're going to stick with our traditional uh, way of doing it, of actually having trick-or-treating on Halloween. I know some people might want me to change it. We've changed it in the past, right, Deputy Mayor? And it was a, it was a problem. So we always stick with. a little with, bit. <laughs> we always stick with Halloween night. So trick or treating in the municipality will be Halloween night on Sunday, the 31st, 6 to 8 p.m. But this will be announced and, and posted all over the place. <laughs> We're going to start with our Citizens Night meeting. If there's anyone that would like to address council on any municipal item, now would be your time to do so. Seeing none, we're going to close that part of the meeting. And we're moving over to our agenda setting meeting. But first, what we have is a presentation by the Monroeville Library in their learning garden. <coughs> Hello. It's Hello. Um, in conjunction with the Recreation and Parks Department. Um, thank you. I'm Nicole Henley, the director of the library. We just wanted to take a few moments to give you more information about an exciting project we're working on together with the, with the Recreation and Parks Department. We are creating the Discovery Gardens of Monroeville. We first encountered learning gardens um, as we became trained as a family place library. We believe that creating Discovery Gardens in Monroeville will allow for robust partnerships, community connections, and will create multiple destinations that encourage learning through play. I'm going to pass it over to Alan Rader, our amazing Assistant Director for Technology and Facilities, to give you more detail about what a learning garden is and can be. Luckily for us, Alan was a landscape architect in a previous life, <laughs> and he helped create these types of interactive community building spaces. Um, thank you very much, Nicole. And so what we, we don't want to take too much of your time this evening. What we want to start with is what is a Discovery Garden? Um, they're outdoors, as you can see on the slide, it's an outdoor space that's dedicated to playing, learning, discovering, and for the most part, certainly featured in the natural environment. Um, those of us especially who are old enough that our parents told us to go away and not come back until the street lights came on. Mm. Um, a lot of kids like that today don't have that type of experience. Um, so the idea is that we're providing areas for play, exploration, pl programs, and a lot more for them in, in a more structured environment. <clears throat> and what I'd like to do very quickly is go ahead and show you some of the components that we'd like to, we're thinking about including. We're not anywhere near a finished plan or anything like that. Some of the things that we want to include are active play. Um, that sounds kind of straightforward, but it's running, jumping, splashing. It's a lot of to do with things to manipulate. It's not just swing sets and slides. It has to do with, uh, there's a certain other level to it. We're also looking for imaginative play. These are areas where we set kids' imaginations free. We give them some tools. We give them some things to play with, whether it's acorns talking to each other, pine cones going to the store, whatever it happens to be. But the idea, again, is that we're really setting them loose to go ahead and, and imagine. We're also looking at active learning. Um, we really want to teach where kids or teach kids where food comes from. Uh, we want to invite volunteers in to one help us garden, but also help teach how to prepare food, where these things come from. And to be a little selfish, we're gonna we would love to have a little bit of extra program space at the library, um, being able to have an outdoor area a pavilion where we can teach classes and have overflow space, and especially with COVID, it's become very important how 
wonderful it is to have these types of areas that are outside. We would also love to continue our partnership with recreation and parks and have them bring their campers over when they do their wonderful camping programs. Passive learning is very simple. It's those discoverable moments that are inside a garden. Um, they're, it's the learning that you happen upon. It can be something as simple as alphabets in, the, in an alphabet mosaic that's in the walkway. It can be hopscotch. It can be counting. Um, but it's also, if you look here on the picture on the right, it, that's not just a display case at Lowe's. That's actually a, dis, it's a, it's a setup for children of smaller age toddlers to be able to take their shoes off and walk on different materials and explore the world of texture and things like that. <clears throat> Sorry, wrong button. There we go. There we go. Of course we want music in a garden and we're even more thrilled to have it outside of the building. Um, <laughs> it'd be great, it's great in the library but it's even better when it's outside. But we also realize we need to create a place where parents can bring their children. And we also want places for non-parents, you know, reading spaces, contemplative spaces. <clears throat> Some of those things are very simple. It's shade, a place to plug in your phone and charge your phone. Um, but we're also looking at things like, you know, a stroller path. I remember when my, bro my little brother was very young, the bumpier the road, the better, when to get him to go to sleep um, and being able to just walk in the loop. Um, and we were even thinking of things like, you can see there, that little tyke. Um, you know, we would love to be able to have a small fleet of those that the kids can just kind of roll around in the, in the area. We're looking at uh, our partnership with recreation and parks and having these in many locations throughout the municipality. The idea is, and pardon the pun, we're going to cross-pollinate <laughs> with each other. The idea is that some people who would go to the parks and experience some of these things would be able to come back, to, would realize that there's other things at the library and vice versa, where if you go to the library, you realize that there are more things that are in the parks. So these are just some of the names of some of the parks and, that we would love to include. But again, we would probably be looking at the hub at the library. <clears throat> Some of the things that we were thinking about doing at the parks, um, we have a wonderful program for the little libraries at the park where you can go in and discover a book, but we'd like to kind of take that back and, and add to it. Um, we would love to apply some volunteers to that, that they would make sure they're stocked all the time, make sure everything's ready so that they're ready to go. We even thought about maybe jazzing them up a little bit with uh, solar panels mm -hmm. and uh, Wi-Fi so that at the parks, when moms has the kids there, she could be on her phone checking some email and not have to worry about it. There's interactive play elements. Um, we were looking at this as part of the refresh program that uh, Paul is working on for the Parks Department, being able to kind of slide some of these other elements in here. We're looking at, and again, volunteer managed, because these aren't precious things. These are things that if they go away, we'll replace them. It's not anything that's like, oh my goodness, there's a huge investment. But these kind of little opportunities, you'll see there on that picture, those are very simple. They're kind of like Lincoln Logs, but they're one-dimensional, so that they stack and it allows kids to play. And, and like we said, if they go away, they go away. We'll deal with it. Um, we are also had been just a little bit of thought to Community Park West with the wonderful um, area there with the maze. Traditionally, from a, I'll put my landscape architect hat back on for a little bit, those mazes would take 40 years for those shrubs to grow big enough for them to actually become fun. Um, but we were thinking, you know, we can possibly add a sundial to that area as well as um, we might be able to put up flags instead and let the kids run around that type of area. So that's just kind of the idea of some of the things that we're looking at to supplement. Again, back at the library, we just have a very, you know, we've got a wonderful opportunity there to have this be a destination. We have the space, and luckily we also have the wonderful, talented staff who can give us programming and add a lot of things to this and have manage this as a destination. And to be quite honest with you, we also think it might be a small revenue generator for us. I know as a parent, we all were, everybody was always looking for that next spot for the birthday. And, um, you know, it's a great way for us to be able to, to, to bring partnerships across the entire municipality and not just us. I'm going to turn it back over to Nicole and she's going to talk about where we are. Um, together, the library and recreation and parks departments are looking forward to working with the community on this amazing project. It's a wonderful opportunity for partnerships and to encourage cross-pollination and more community cooperation instead of the silos that we sometimes find ourselves in. I'd like to give you a quick look at the steps that we're following. Back in 2017, we knew we needed more programming space. And the idea to create a pavilion arose um, <clears throat> to have outdoor, little mini outdoor concerts, things like that. 
During that campaign, we raised $37,000 towards the project. In addition, we raised over $10,000 this year during our Love Your Library campaign. This seed money will allow us to move forward with the next steps. Um, after meeting with you, we are creating a working group that will include park staff, library staff, board members from both, and community stakeholders. Um, we'll have a property survey done um, in the different places that we're looking at to add some of these elements, and then hold a workshop to fully develop a schematic plan. After that, a budget will be developed and we will begin working even more on fundraising, partnerships, and grant writing. We anticipate construction on the largest part in the library backyard to begin in 2023, but of course, timing depends on fundraising success. Also, we anticipate being able to address some other areas in the parks where we can incorporate Discovery Garden ideas to show the community what this can be and get them excited about the next steps. Um, Paul was nice enough to give us a tour and we looked at some places that are, for uh, lack of a better term, low-hanging fruit, things that we can improve and make exploratory, give people an opportunity to learn. So that is what we would like to do. Um, are there <coughs> any questions? <laughs> we talked fast, we tried to keep this short. Yes, I have a couple questions. Yes, sir. Number one, how do you plan to fund this? Fundraising, grant writing. Do you have, do you have any idea the uh, estimated cost of this project? We have a general number in mind, but not until we do the schematic planning. I because see. right now it has been a throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Right. So now we have to go back and fine tune it what would most benefit our community, what do the um, families, parents, kids, adults want to see. Okay, and my last question would be, uh, you said that you would have volunteers that would participate with the group. How would you vet, the, vet those? Anytime we have a volunteer at the library, they have to do the... Um, all the certifications. The, all the certifications. Safety, they, the criminal background and the child abuse mm -hmm. um, right. clearances. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, Sorry. The project uh, <laughs> seems like a good move, uh, but what about the convenience of parking, which council mentioned uh, before? <laughs> you know, it's nice to have a program, but if there's nowhere to park, it makes it tough. The, the part that we expect to be active most in the library area will be on the, so if you're in the library, if you're behind the library, library bu buildings behind your back, it would be on the left side, so towards the upper parking lot. And um, we actually were just talking, there is room in the upper parking lot mm -hmm. to add spaces. Towards the high school. Towards the space towards mm -hmm. the high school too. Actually, you could take, if you're in the upper parking <coughs> lot, and if you're looking at the side of the building, mm -hmm. there's plenty of room to expand to the left side of that. In fact, Chief and I were just up there yesterday. We couldn't find a way to get in the building. <laughs> well, with the construction, yeah. yes. Yeah, I don't count it for now. Just Hopefully so. that will be over soon but that's and okay. for the better. What I'm saying is you have an opportunity for expansion of uh, parking up there. Yeah, I think we I have an opportunity. I don't know how many parking space spaces you could get, but. Yeah. Well, yeah, they got to finish counting with us. <laughs> But the so parking's got to be part of the schematic plan. Absolutely. Of course. And what you're, <laughs> okay. We can't just say we're gonna, they're going to build no. this. Mm -hmm. The parking has to be part of, mm -hmm. of the whole plan. So yes. I think that's, a, yeah, you have to that's an important point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, a quick question, though, too. So I think there's a differentiation here that's, that's important. One, I think a lot of what the library piece starts, even and even into the parks, is being fundraised through the library group that's in, in place to do that, too. But... Drag Paul up for just a second. You weren't going to get out of this without it. <laughs> so, in, and I attended a, a joint meeting between the two boards, which was actually pretty cool that these guys, you know, are, are working together. They, the group of them, and some of them are also here already tonight, too, from both, both of those boards. But you had also brought up about furthering the park, it, the parks program as well. And that's really kind of, you know, on our capital functions that we are, you know, going to be coming towards 
you know, up, up in the next into the near future. So you had some yeah, ideas. Yeah, I mean, I think the, definitely yeah. with for us, it's a great partnership. I think it's an opportunity. We've already started working on a bunch of different things together. The Halloween event, we've got some special events. We have some different activities to take Alan and Nicole over and to see uh, Alan at the amphitheater look up and say, I've never been here, and to see, like he said, cross pollination, it's a great fit for us. I mean, it really will be for us. I feel like we're going to be taking, we're going to get the hang, low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. Actually, I got it from the mayor, but uh, that's, you know, I think we're going to get that opportunity to start putting some of those things in our parks ahead of time before this plan even comes into play. Mm -hmm. So, um, Paul, would we use the, the uh, uh, money that we received from the uh, pool sale for, for the park? Well, we designated program. for it. Yeah. Pardon me? We designated, we, I mean, we had a resolution. We talked about doing that towards. Right, yeah. right, right. Would, would that, is that what you would use? Well, I, I would say that, and I would say this, when I, and I talked to Eric about this, you know, Nicole said she had already put in $37,000, mm -hmm. I believe well, it was. they've always been good at fundraising. Yeah. Sure. And I think that the fundraising, really this has to be the biggest part is fundraising. We really need to focus on that. I mean, you know, not putting Paul on the spot, but Paul and Mike and myself are really working hard. And with this council, we've never gotten so much further along with far as getting our parks back into mm -hmm. into play. And I think it's important that we try to focus if we're going to use some a lot of that money, it should continue to do that. But I'm not opposed, but that's not my call. That's you right. guys' call no, to make that call for maybe a match from what Nicole's doing. Because I think, you know, definitely. Well, would that qualify for uh, what we designated basically for was for parks, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Mm -hmm. we didn't designate it for library projects. Mm -hmm. So how would we get around that? I, I, well, at, at this point, Tom, I, I guess you know that's a good question for us to debate. To, as well, we go I'm forward. not going to worry about it because you're going to have to talk to the next council. <laughs> about it. Yeah, yeah. And, and a few of them were interested in it and they came mm -hmm. <laughs> to do that. So, but the other piece that was, I think, the expectation as we start moving towards budget, budget season for all of you is a longer term plan. What does this mean? You know, in place. How does right. this look for the rec and, department? And you're, what you're can they add to that? And you're also limited uh, at the library uh, project to, let's say, uh, six, eight months a year. You're not going to be able to run it 12 months a year. No, uh, that's that's a Pennsylvania or do you, problem. Or, <laughs> there's, there's actually a but little more leeway than you would think. Okay, you know, with the shoulder um, seat. That's what first, I wanted to hear. Yeah. Well, yeah. Alan's actually has a little program. I forgot the snowball thing. Like, Alan, you did oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Said, we have found things in the winter that we might be able to possibly do along with this. Yeah, we, we, we had talked, you know, frankly, there's one of the areas that we thought about was some lawn area. And we thought, wouldn't it be great to have snowmen building and snow forts on a snow day? Great idea. And, you know, snowman. and also we, it's going to cost, but we're going to light it so that, you know, even right. now, no, it's, the weather's lovely outside, but yeah. it's dark. Right. But we can handle that, you know. Now, the other piece that I, I, and again, I know this from seeing the previous presentation, but I think you guys forgot something. Isn't this the first one? Oh, this would be the first one in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yes. Cut that out this, the last time. This would be yeah. the first Discovery Garden. So maybe we can get some money from the state then. Um, <laughs> we, we actually took this um, to just share the idea with Brandon Markosik. He was very excited about it. Um, he knows a lot about grants. He thought it would be... Um, with mm -hmm. a, about, uh, a grant Jim magnet. Brewster. How about Jim Brewster? Um, he is next on our list. <laughs> We've also had a couple foundations who have come to us Good. and said that they would like to be involved. Monroeville Foundation? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. We continue with the Parks and Recs portion of it, too, and I think it's, you yeah, know, there's a lot of photos in places. The last time, you know, and I said time frame, you know, we got to had it a little bit here. Well, it sounds to me like you have your ducks in a row. Yeah. yeah. And our public yeah. relations person, who is amazing, is already already has fundraising ideas permeating. And I think we'd really like this to make these places where everyone feels welcome and everyone feels like they've been able to touch a piece of it. Everybody's been able to create some little piece of it that goes into it. Um, well, we know the, we love the job you're doing, Nicole. You, Thank you. You've been amazing. I shouldn't say amazing, you've been terrific. <laughs> and, uh, Terrifically amazing. It's, it's just a pleasure to work with you. Thank, Thank you. you.
You well, this is definitely a good first step. Uh, great you. presentation. I think it's thank a good you. project, and uh, we look forward to hearing more about it as it moves along. Thank Wonderful. you very much. Thank, thank you so you much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well well done. Thank you like Eric said, thanks for the boards for coming to the board. Yes. Thank yes. You guys. yes. Thank, thank you. Thank boards you. and all that they do thank and you. all the hours they put in for these type of things. Thank so, you. Very thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, moving over, we have an executive session announcement. The council conducted an executive session before Citizens Night on tonight, Thursday, October 7th from 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. for personnel and litigation reasons. Council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at the Tuesday, October 12th, regular council meeting. Council, we have minutes to consider for Tuesday uh, of the Citizens Night meeting of September 9th, 2021, the council agenda setting meeting of September 9th, 2021, and the regular council meeting of September 14th, 2021. Any uh, corrections, additions, or comments about those minutes? Seeing none, mm -hmm. Council, you received the reports of the tax collections. Are there any questions or comments about those? Thank you. Seeing none, list of bills and budget transfers. Any questions, Council, about those items? Very good. And the payroll report. We received that. Any comments or questions about the payroll report? Mm -mm. Very good. Well, we, could, we will consider all of those on Tuesday at the October 12th meeting. Moving over to our consent agenda. New business, 21-5-C, Mark and Courtney Williams. Mr. Little, please. Yeah, um, this applicant is requesting a conditional use approval to establish a church in an existing <coughs> house pursuant to the Monroeville Zoning Ordinance number 1443 as amended, section 401, conditional use, and table 201. A permitted use, conditional use, yard and area requirements. Property is located at 1830 Old Ramsey Road in the S Conservancy Zoning District and known as tax parcel 861B134. Planning Commission has recommended approval. This is a conditional use, so it's a public hearing, and anybody that testifies will have to be sworn in. Is the applicant here? You want to join us? Sure. You just stand at the podiums. Okay. Can you design? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, if you could sign in, please. And as Mr. Little mentioned, this is a public hearing item. Uh, if there's anyone in the audience that would like to add testimony to this public hearing, uh, I'll swear you in as well. If after hearing some of the testimony from the applicants, if you change your mind, you can, you'll have another opportunity to comment if you, as we get going, if anyone wants to speak. We do so, have a bunch of information to pass out if that's helpful, but if you don't need it, we can just leave it here. Uh, we'll take the information. If you may sure. just hand it to one of those gentlemen, maybe Mr. Williams at the end, and we'll just hand it down. Can you talk? Could you lower your mouth? If you're comfortable, but you can lower your mouth. I, I can try to project. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And if you would, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to swear you both in, if you could raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Right. I do. I do. Right. Very good. Thank you. And if you could both state your name for the record. Mark Williams. Mark Williams. Courtney Williams. Courtney Williams. Welcome. So if you want to discuss your, your application here, what you plan on doing, and we'll go from there. Sure. sure. I can just, um, I prepared it to read, so I'll start with that. Um, we recently purchased property at 1830 Old Ramsey Road, um, closing on the property in mid-July. It's a 25 acre tract of land, has a log home that was built in 1792 by Charles Graham and his family with a two story barn. The current property has a split zoning S and R2, and we're here today to continue our application process for a conditional use of church and school for the property due to our intention of offering classes at our farm, which we learned in discussions with the zoning department before even closing on the property that we would need. Um, that would be necessary for offering such classes. So no new structures will be built or amended so we don't have a site map to share. We're just asking for permission to use our current property as it stands to offer classes to the community. Um, we both work for the past 15 years in regenerative agriculture and permaculture and in urban agriculture community development projects within the nonprofit sector in the city of Pittsburgh. 
um, working to turn vacant lots into pr productive gardens, teaching ecology and gardening classes to youth and families, and selling produce to restaurants and at farmer's markets. We worked with the City of Pittsburgh Green Up Program to, claim, to reclaim a baseball field and its adjacent five acres in the Perry South neighborhood of Pittsburgh and establish a community farm called Ballfield Farm. We've always dreamed of finding more land close to the city to serve as a space to grow food and to grow community. And now, as we embark on transforming this property into a small regenerative farm, it's our hope to offer classes to community members in permaculture and sustainable agriculture and gardening. Class topics will include hands-on learning and soil basics, fertility management, edible landscape design, water management, catchment, and conservation, food forest establishment and management, succession planting, four-season vegetable production, hugel culture and swale establishment, no-till field management, plant propagation, and seed saving. Our proposed schedule would include offering small classes of 10 to 12 participants once or twice a month on site at the property, meeting in the barn or in the downstairs gathering spaces of the farmhouse. Our methods of cultivation don't include large-scale noisy or extractive machinery. We use manual hand tools like broad forks, stirrup hose, shovels, trowels, the types of tools our grandparents used to grow their food. Um, in the packet in the back, we included some letters of support from past colleagues in urban agriculture in the city um, for you all to look at. Also, Mark is a mindfulness educator for children and families, and he offers individual and group mindfulness classes that involve teaching skills of social emotional learning, empathy, kindness, and playful mindfulness practices that help children navigate the wide range of their emotions. Um, after years working as a classroom educator and after completing his graduate degree in education with a focus on mindfulness um, training for educators and after understanding the research on how mindfulness practices can help build resilience, boost mood and self-esteem, encourage positive behavior, reduce anxiety and improve overall mental health, encourage healthy conflict resolution, improve attention and focus, facilitate better cognitive development and create changes in the brain that allow for better emotional regulation. He began offering the service to students and families that he served and taught with. Um, now he has his own business called Kinder Neighborhood, teaching individual and group mindfulness sessions. These sessions have taken place most recently over Zoom due to COVID, um, but also in public parks and community centers throughout the city of Pittsburgh. We're excited now to potentially be able to offer his services of nature-based mindfulness classes at our property here in Monroeville. He's hoping to offer group class cohorts for families on the farm that meet for an hour and a half on four consecutive Saturday mornings throughout the year and individual sessions at variable times. Um, and there are also included in your packet some letters of support from parents and families who he's already been working with. Um, as specified in the zoning ordinance, conditional uses shall be approved if and only if they're found to meet the following criteria. And we are prepared tonight, and I did lay out, you have this in front of you, so I might not need to read it to you, um, but we're prepared to show how our conditional use will comply with all of the regulations. Very good. Uh, will, you, will you be residing at this property? We will we, be there, yes. Will your primary residence? Well, we currently live on the north side, and we're still getting this place up and running, so it's just dependent yeah. on if we're allowed to do this, so. Understood. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Did you have anything you wanted to add? No, she's the brains of the operation. <laughs> That's good, good man. Um, <laughs> Council, any questions at this point? The, I, I have I a do, question. I do uh, have a question. Okay. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, how many uh, people do you have attending this facility at this point? Zero. Zero. No one's come because we don't have the variance yet. And, and how many people will hold at any given service? Twelve would be the max that we would be well, looking for. And is there ample parking? And I would ask uh, our engineer, mm -hmm. is there ample parking for this uh, project? They have 25 acres and a large driveway. <laughs> they shouldn't have any problem <laughs> accommodating you know, 12 cars or 10 Yeah, in our planning uh, department, they said they have 25 acres because, Paul, we can't okay. hear, they can't hear you. Um, I, don't, I don't think the 25 acres, plenty of room to do anything, but the, the parking, you know, you can't park on the grass. You have to have a parking lot, and does the parking lot have to be paved, or can it be stones? Mr. Wilden, if you don't mind. Uh, for the minimal use that they're intending to use the property for, uh, they could just have a gravel lot. Okay. Uh, it's primarily a residence, and uh, uh, at the Planning Commission meeting, I think they were talking about maybe two classes a month. 
Correct. That's not about right. So I mean, it's, it's not a it's not a high volume use. Paul, oh, is there any requirement to notify the people on Kilbuck and Westminster that this is going to happen? Uh, we did post the property and we sent letters out to all the property owners within 300 feet of the property, like our typical conditional use. And in this packet, Council, and for the audience too, there's a letter of support from their closest neighbor. Um, the home closest to them has a letter of support in the packet as well. I'm not sure if you all are familiar with Old Ramsey Road, but there are only three houses. The neighbor mm -hmm. um, at the driveway, the entrance to the farm property, is the letter of support that you'll find in the packet, and that's the neighbor that we have actual contact with. The other cul-de-sacs where we do have neighbors, they're not, because of the topography of the farm, mm -hmm. they're not neighbors that we ever come in contact with um, and have yet to meet them. There, there's a lot of elevation difference between mm -hmm. right. those cul-de-sacs and where their house is. There's, mm -hmm. there's Right. Maybe a hundred feet. It's it's. But old it's, Ramsey would be the access. Yes. If if I would decide to take a ride down there to have a look, is it accessible? You're not coming from the bottom of Old Ramsey. Yeah, Ramsey's. don't come from the bottom. Come from the top of Old Ramsey. From the top of Old Ramsey. Yes, sir. As you and if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to tell you, as you come down the hill, there's a home that's on your left and a driveway. You make the left into the driveway, that's and then correct. you move back to the property. It's, right. There's it's, a house at the end of it. I've been to it. It's labeled a Salnick Lane. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I, I so it has a road sign so there. It continues and it the whole way back. I'm part of And a, a question here on how we have something listed, because I just want to be sure in the usage if it makes a difference. So this actually may be a, a Paul question. Too. Tim, we wrote here at, at church. Sorry. Sorry, Ron. Let me repeat myself. Uh, on our listing here, we listed it, it said church yeah, on in top the, of it. But it's really church and school. Yeah, the, in the centers. use table, church and school are the same line That's, item. Thank you. So it. it they go one hand in hand with each other. Okay, and it, it relates, doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference, and it relates to its profitability or our taxability status of it. Uh, th that would be a question for them. Uh, I, I don't know if uh, <laughs> if they're going to apply for any kind of tax exempt status. No. No. Hmm. Oh, okay. That's the, the question. This is a small side thing. We have mm -hmm. off farm work. This is just something that we want to contribute to how we're mm -hmm. using the farm and giving back from the farm. How many days a week did you think you would be having class there? We're just thinking about classes a couple of times a month on a weekend. Oh. He's a teacher. We're busy during the week. Um, mm -hmm. with Not that you couldn't increase it. I was just curious. Sure, yeah. with full-time work and other things. But um, in small scale, especially organic agriculture, a lot of what pays the bills and what actually the mission is, is is teaching and giving back to the community, not just growing um, vegetables. So that's really what we're interested in doing. Do you plan on living on the property? Eventually, yes. 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 Okay. There's a house at the very end of that. We have a I, picture if you yeah. all, I don't know if you all Any are familiar. There you go. Yep. Perfect. Oh, oh. Right on the sticker there. Thanks. Oh, okay. Oh. oh. A whole new mm -hmm. How old is that home? Barn. It was built in 1792-ish. Well, we've had some different dates. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> so, what's the name of the lane that goes off Old Ramsey? Soundnick. There's no street sign currently. It's just a gravel road on the left okay. as you're coming down. Yeah, I'm trying to visualize because I was the, I, I was on Old Ramsey. You'll get to the road close sign. Right. Mm -hmm. Turn left. Turn left. Oh, okay. If you hit the barrier as you went. Too far. 20 feet too far. <laughs> yeah, there's the structure that's on the, okay. on, as yeah. you come down. The there's a dog the up on the dog. porch. Yep. Yeah, and that's my house. Yep. There's another dog across the street. Yeah. Me, I know. I've yep. not been done Turn left, twice. and then there's yeah. two they dogs been, at the end. They've been barking away. <laughs> 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 Mr. Sink, you had a question? Yeah, I do. Mark, for you. Yes, sir. Um, I see that you're a graduate degree in education with a focus on mindful training. I'm not familiar with that. Yes, sir. But some of the stuff you're saying that you're going to deal with looks like a lot of mental health issues. Yeah. Are you qualified yes. to so do that? Wait, wait. Before I meet with anyone, speak on the mic, yeah. please. Before I meet with anyone, I make sure that they know mindfulness education is not a replacement for mental health care. It's in addition to. So I make sure that everyone knows that. Are what you I'm doing. licensed to do this kind of? To do that kind of work, yes. Not to do mental health care. Because what you're saying is, is that encourage positive behavior boost it mood and self-esteem yep that's improve correct. overall health overall mental health and uh you know 
That's correct. And that's all backed by the, the science and the, and the research of what mindfulness practices can do. But the most important thing I say, and I reinforce when I'm working with parents and with students, is that just a meditation and mindfulness class and practice is not in any way, shape, or form. Because the reason I'm asking yeah. that, I've worked in mental health for Yeah, it's like a years. it's the difference between joining a gym and then going to the doctor. So going to the gym helps you stay healthy, but it's not a replacement for getting a physical. And that's it's the exact same thing with mental with and, you, and that's perfectly clear to the hundred percent. It's all over my website. It's all it's okay. in every le lesson that I give to students. Question, Mr. Ratcher, is is that are you familiar with this education and graduate degree in mindfulness? I'm no, I'm not familiar with that. I am familiar very familiar with the property though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> Okay, I'll leave it alone. Thank you for Are, answering. Well, well those uh, um, participants, well, will they be living on the property? No, the participants? No. Huh? Right. Okay, so they'll be this transported. Is just, it's just like parents come with their stu with their children and we meet for an hour and a half. We go okay, on a hike so, and then they leave. Okay, so you meet with the parents and the children? Yeah, I always require that the parents meet first so that they have a full under, because some parents come thinking, oh, this is cheaper than mental health care. And when, put a squash on that and make sure they know. I, this that's is what I was to. concerned about. Yeah, me too. Because I was licensed to, yeah. and I was just a little pee on it. <laughs> and, I, I, and I come back to one other piece on the, the zoning. I probably <laughs> didn't express this very clearly too. So we, we talked about that between, you know, it's, it's classification too. So if there's fee for service mm -hmm. that's involved with that too, does that, and I'm sorry, again, it's probably Paul, <laughs> third. <laughs> Um, question. Paul from, two. Paul two. No, he's Paul three. He's, he's Paul three. the third. No, he's Paul he's two three. now. No, there's still three Pauls. He's always been three. No, he's Paul uh, three in his family. Anyway, no, he, Paul, <laughs> he, he don't move up. Can we talk Mr. about Mr. Weldon? <laughs> so, is there a conflict with this about being a, a business occupancy given this fee for service on that as it conflicts with the school, and how does that you know affect it in terms of does there have to be a zoning change? Uh, no, no, uh, if. The, the school was permitted in the S and R district. Okay. Uh, now, as far as operating a business, uh, I mean, I don't know where you draw the line between a school and a business. Well, fee, um, the fee for service is pri and you know privately funded. I, I, mean, I would say this doesn't fee. rise to that Does level. Not? This could at the very most be considered like a home occupation or something. Right. That That's seems like my children's yeah. piano teacher, sort of. Right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, that was just a, a, a question to add to that. And then you just didn't find it, and this is just informational too, because you know we talked about giving back to the community a little earlier here from here. What else is in in your um, conception of giving back to the community? When you mentioned here We're, the program, the that thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's the uh, only Paul for us. Yeah. No, right. just kidding. Uh, to do that. So, yeah. how, how do you envision that? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've, uh, so the work that we did in Pittsburgh and on the north side, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the way that it uh, is beneficial to neighbors and the community is that it not only beautifies the property that it's on, but it encourages other people to take ownership of um, their own pieces of land and empowers them to do the same thing elsewhere. So what we found in our neighborhood is we would um, invite people onto our space to learn how to garden and then we would go with them to their properties and help them do the same thing that we had done and so it was kind of like uh, a ripple effect as we did our work on our property we would watch it spread throughout the neighborhood and then the relationships were reciprocal they'd come over and ask for advice vice versa we'd go and help and so our hope is that by teaching the gardening and sustainability classes we can encourage other neighbors to do the same thing well, and develop hope relationships. I hope to look forward and stay in contact with the groups we had up here earlier. Yeah, I was excited. I was like, yeah. oh, we need to so, talk. <laughs> you know, to, to do that, I think, would be a, a terrific. I also think that the reason this 25 acres has not been um, built up and it's still intact in Monroeville is that there's no way to um, develop this piece of property in conventional ways. Um, if you have, if you are familiar with the piece of property, mm -hmm. it's on the side of a mountain. Yep. Um, and using permaculture practices, small-scale agriculture practices, no-till practices, because we do have big concerns about erosion down into the Turtle <laughs> Creek watershed area. We really do think that the way that we're interested in farming it and teaching other people to care for it is actually what 
the Turtle Creek watershed needs, more people who have knowledge about how to think about the waterway, to think about the whole ecosystem, to think about how it's all connected. Mm -hmm. um, so we're pretty excited about what and, and not to be difficult from it. So let me sure. do the antithesis a little bit to, to, for you. So how are we assured, because again, we're familiar with it, how close it is to that, the creek on the, would be the east or more east side of it, I guess. Yes, you're yeah, right. Yeah, I east think so, yeah, east part of it too. How would we be assured that, the, that any of the practices that you did wouldn't then interfere with that space? Because we do have the Turtle Creek watershed, we have the conservants and the trail uh, it's not that far away sure. you know, down there too so I mean what assurances do you give us that that wouldn't turn into a problem yeah I would just refer you to the letters of recommendation and reach out and contact okay. those folks they can vouch for us we are not just people that dress like hippies <laughs> we actually care about the earth uh, okay. first and foremost and we're already in conversation with the Turtle Creek Watershed Association um, so that we can just <clears throat> filter into their plans for the area we don't claim to know all of their overarching plans for that space um, because the watershed area is big and wide and we're just a small piece of that now. Um, so we're just hopeful to kind of get in with them and figure out what their strategic plan is and see how we can benefit um, and work together with them and collaborate. And for the last five years I was teaching at the Environmental Charter School um, ecology and mm -hmm. partnering with the local watershed there at Frick Park. Um, partnering with GASP and the Clean Air Initiative. We, and do you have references to those? I'm familiar with those folks at Frick. Is there a yeah. contact with that too? Sure, sure. yeah, yep. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, you understand my, my reason for, for the question for you too. Yeah, I think it's interesting because we're right on the watershed and us coming here and doing this actually gives you access to come and see. If we had not come, we could just be you just could, living there, doing whatever we want that's to the a good watershed. Point. I was so the, that the up. fact yeah. that as, we, as a private property Barbara, owner, you could you, you could build a you could build a garden. Exactly. If, if private property, you, could, you build a garden on your own. Exactly. And, and we uh, wanted to make sure we were doing site. everything above board, <laughs> okay. so that you could see we want this to be a benefit for Monroe. And especially, it's zoned for agricultural use. And when we initially met with Paul, um, he said, in terms of animals, you're zoned in, uh, for agriculture. Mm -hmm. You can use animals. And so my concern was. Maybe there needs to be some, some some stricter confines around how people on the watershed, what animals they can use, how many, what are they doing with the animal waste? And so us mm -hmm. bringing it before you tonight, we're asking for some collaboration so that we can do this well and use this property well. Um, and that's just because we're looking for the school zoning. If it wasn't for that, we would have had a little more free reign, in my opinion, maybe too much free reign of what we could be doing on a piece of property that close to Turtle Creek. Right. Are you aware that uh, years ago that uh, there was a Westinghouse had a micarta mill there, which was highly toxic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I don't know how the creek is today, but uh, I, w I would uh, strongly encourage you to, if you can, look into that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the EPA's gotten involved or not, but uh, I lost a few friends that used to go up there swimming, and they, they ended up with cancer very, wow. very, very bad. Yeah. I have a question for you, ma'am. Uh, do you know the name of the original owners of that property? The original? The original owner. The builder of the property was Charles Graham. That's back Graham. in 1700. Charles Graham. We bought it from Mary Selnick. The lane is called Selnick, but her last name is actually Selnick, S-E-L-N-I-C-K. Oh, no, but the, the Graham, okay. That's, Charles that's a, Graham. That's an old quick care family. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. I, I have a question for you yeah. uh, concerning noise pollution. Are you planning any kind of outside audio, uh, music, speakers, uh, or anything not of that with sort? speakers. No, I mean, I'm a big fan of porch front music. I have a banjo and guitar and harmonica and those kind of things, but nothing that's amplified. You're not plugged in. I'm not plugged in, though. No. Okay. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> well, you hit us on a good night. Very good. Well, uh, so planning. Slow. <laughs> planning we have lots of questions. Planning Commission uh, really didn't have any major comments over this, correct? I'm seeing an affirmative and uh, nothing from our department from municipal standards as well, no issues. Uh, personally, I think it's this is a, a great project. I think we're actually lucky to have someone coming in and caring for an older mm -hmm. home. I think there's a lot of old homes that don't get cared for and properties don't get cared for. And uh, I think we're in a unique situation here. Where we have someone, a couple that could uh, really want to take care of a property here in the municipality. So um, with that, does anyone have any other future any questions about the for the public hearing? Anyone from the audience would like to add testimony for this public hearing at this moment? I have a question. Is there anybody living in the house now? 
we, we're I fixing mean, up the kitchen. Yeah, we're still working on it. I'm there every day, but yeah. every day. the family's at the house on the north side that has all the okay. plumbing yeah. and everything working. All right. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> Council, anything else for the public hearing? Seeing that we're going to close the public hearing and, and Council will consider this on Tuesday. A right, great job and Thank good you luck. So much. Thank you. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you all. Council, moving over to our motions this evening, we have three. Mr. Little. Yeah, the first is a motion to authorize to advertise for a public hearing for an intermunicipal transfer of a restaurant liquor license. Uh, Council, in your packet, you will have a letter from Flaherty, the law firm of Flaherty and O'Hara, requesting that we transfer a, our, a liquor license from North Fayette Township be transferred into uh, Monroeville and for a Longhorn Steakhouse. And under the uh, Pennsylvania law, if you have more than, I believe it's uh, one liquor license per 3,000 people, and there you have to, there's no liquor licenses available, you can transfer one from one that is within the county that is available. And that is what they're proposing. We get one of these maybe every year, 18 months. And this is just for authorization to advertise for the public hearing and to make the public and council aware that if they approve the advertising on Tuesday, that it'll be on the agenda for November. Tim, that would be going where the old Golden Corral was, right? Well, we don't know that definitely. I mean, I, that's what I've heard, but I don't know that yes. definitely. It's a rumor. Makes rumor. sense. Yeah. Rumor. That's a rumor mill. Unconfirmed <coughs> rumor. A rumor Unconfirmed is just a rumor. premature fact. Yeah. <laughs> What's the answer? 3129? Well, how do you consider importing a liquor license if you don't know where it's going to be? Well, well we're only asking for the advertisement for oh. Tuesday. Okay. That'll all be discussed in the November question. meeting. <laughs> yeah. But and that will be very clearly <laughs> outlined. Common sense question. Yeah. They, they, will, uh, <coughs> they will present that in November. It's not going at the farm that just presented. Okay. <laughs> as long as it's not going down on Old Ramsey Road by the new church. <laughs> Mr. Little, next item. Okay, number two, a motion to authorize to advertise an ordinance accepting Asbury Court. Asbury Court is off of Cabot Road, has never been adopted by the municipality, and uh, Mr. Hugus and I have uh, spoken about this one and uh, decided that uh, this should be put on the docket and, and for council's consideration to uh, authorize to advertise the ordinance on Tuesday. Any questions on that, council? It just meets all the standards then, correct? Um, I, Paul, you want to answer that? I don't want to <laughs> go out on a limb here. Yes and no. <laughs> no. Definitely maybe then. Just for clarification, you, this is all one. That's, that's all correct. one, right. And you guys asked about when the house is built on selling claim? Greg helped build it, so you could probably ask him. <laughs> okay, I should have asked Greg. <laughs> I thought Tom so did. <laughs> actually, items actually items two and three are they're, they're parallel tracks here. They're both roads that were developed in the late '80s, early '90s. The municipality never adopted them by ordinance. Uh, the reasons that they were not 100% complete when I say that they didn't have the street trees and street lighting installed by the developer. Um, mm. Since that point in time, the developers of bonds have expired. Um, irregardless, we've we've maintained them. Uh, by maintaining the roads and winter maintenance both. So uh, in, in an effort to get liquid fuels money, we have to adopt it by ordinance so we can get the money for that. That's the reason for adopting by ordinance. Is there any problem adopting them? By no, then? there is not. The streets are constructed? Yes, That's yes. The, that was my, to the best I, I'm of surprised our it hasn't been done before this time because we're losing liquid fuels money, although right. it's, it's not like as if it's going to give us tens It's just part of our ongoing oh, audit to make sure that we have yeah. everything done. Was there bonds released? Well, the bonds the, the bonds had expired. Let's put it that way. The but bonds expired. The developer's bonds expired a long time ago. Where, where's the money? They just got their money back then. Oh, I think the developers were gone a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> but the streets are constructed to your satisfaction. Well, I don't think we have a choice in it, Ron. It, where they are not. The, the developer is no longer here. Is that true? I, some, some of the past practices, not to cast a negative light on any people, but I, I, I think the municipality has greatly improved 
its system for category uh, or, or, or uh, categorizing bonds and, uh, and paying attention to dates when bonds expire and whether or not work has been done or not done. Yeah, but Paul said we don't have a choice. I mean, if it's not up to standard, well, well, you have I a road. Have you have a road that was put in, let's say, what, 20, 30 years ago? Yeah, it Probably. was late '80s, early '90s when it was when it was used. Forty understand. years ago, you've undertaken various maintenance responsibilities on the road, winter maintenance, maybe some other things. Yes. Have these ever been resurfaced? Yes. So at this point, you have a situation where a well, developer should have that, done Paul. something. I didn't know we resurfaced it. That yeah. does change. Yeah, and thing. the problem is, is if it, it's incumbent on the municipality to chase these developers down and hold them to their obligations. If we don't do that, then the residents, in most cases, are the ones that suffer because they, they bought a home, thought it was a public street that their taxes paid to maintain. Right. No, no, I get it now. But there's a proper right of way. There's proper turnarounds. Yes, they were laid. All the, the attempt was to lay it out and develop it and construct it to municipal standards. To the best of our knowledge, that's happened except for the street trees and the street lighting. Okay, but those are the small things. Where that's I think correct. maybe what council is concerned about is maybe the width, the turnarounds, right. the call. No, the, 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 the established right of ways are there. You know, they have cul de sacs and okay. you know, all the, the basics are there. Very good. Council, any further questions? New. Thank you, Mr. Hugis. No problem. Thanks, Paul. No. Mr. Little, <laughs> next item. Okay, uh, number three is the same as Mr. Hugis says. Motion authorized to advertise an ordinance accepting Grandwood Court, which is off of Grandview uh, Avenue, and that is the same um, as Asbury Court. Any other Thank questions, Council? Seeing none. Very good. Moving over to our resolutions. Okay, first resolution is a resolution authorizing the distribution of the 2021 General Municipal Pension System Aid pursuant to the Municipal Pension Plan Act of 2005-1984. <coughs> and as council can see on their pink sheets, this resolution we have received $1,017,024 uh, this year for the two pension plans and that will be distributed accordingly to the resolution. 560603 to the non-uniform and $456,421 uh, to the police pension plan. And we owe a total of $3.8 million and some change to the two pension plans, and that will be distributed as per the resolution in the uh, third paragraph. $1.3 million approximately to the non-uniform and $2.5 million uh, to the police pension plan. And that is for your consideration on Tuesday. Very good. Next item. Okay, next item is a resolution electing to amend the non-uniform pension plan administered by the Pennsylvania Municipal Retirement System pursuant to Act 4 of the Pennsylvania Municipal Retirement Law agreeing to be bound by all provisions of the Pennsylvania Municipal Retirement Law as amended and as applicable to member municipalities. To give council a little bit of background on this, um, PMRS, which is Pennsylvania Municipal Retirement System, uh, is looked at, I guess is the best term, by the IRS approximately every five, six, seven years. And we have to complete a questionnaire, which you have in your packet, which is a, a basic questionnaire of all the provisions uh, in our non-uniform <coughs> pension. Uh, I had some questions, not serious questions, that were answered later in the day today at about quarter to four. And if I get everything answered the way I want it, I want to call them back, PMRS, then uh, we can have this adopted if council so considers on Tuesday. If not, I would like council to table it because I want to make sure everything on this is correct. And, uh, and, and I talked to the lady on the phone, it was very late in the day, four o'clock, and she says no problem if it's in the November, that's no problem at all. So any questions on that, Council? Next item. Okay, next item is a resolution authorizing the proper municipal, municipal officials to enter into a traffic signal maintenance agreement with Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for the Monroeville Boulevard and Wingate Drive intersections. Uh, Council, you have in your packet a somewhat voluminous um, agreement with PennDOT, and I kind of reviewed it, and uh, it all looks basic to me, and I think, uh, Bob, I think you reviewed it too, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, I think that, yes, I think the uh, title of it's actually changed. This is a more global agreement. Yeah, that's, yeah. Mr. Hugus can speak to that. Can you give us the high points, Mr. Hugus? Absolutely. The whole reason this started is that uh, we're, we're trying to um, update the traffic signal Wingate Minerva Boulevard via grant. Uh, PennDOT adopted some new uh, uh, regulations, as they always do. And one of the things they want to include with their application to upgrade a signal or install a new signal is this agreement that they're trying to make with all the municipalities, boroughs, and townships to make sure that better uh, care is taken of the signals and that they have some recourse to those that don't take care of their signals. That's pretty much okay, that. Okay, very good. So on, on the, uh, for Tuesday, Paul, we're yes. going to take off there from Monroeville Boulevard and Wingate intersection is correct yeah. yeah because the the, the uh, traffic signal maintenance agreement is for all the traffic signals yeah mm -hmm. it just it, it has to be submitted with the application to update the Minerva Boulevard and Wingate Drive signal Understood. Tim the resolution itself actually has the yes. yeah okay yeah, yeah. I saw that. yeah so we just have to update the agenda yeah. that's all okay. any okay. questions for Mr. Hugus yep. thank you sir Mr. Little Okay, last resolution is a resolution authorizing the display of vertical pole banners on PennDOT highways, streets, and roads rights of way of property belonging to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. This is in your packet. It's the last uh, resolution, obviously, and the last page of that is a depiction of what would go on, and I'm sure everybody in the audience and council has seen the different vertical banners in different communities. A lot of them have veterans on there. And we're working with Paul Estock. Is Paul still here? Um, we're working with Paul Estock. We've been working on this for like since July. Mm -hmm. uh, CGI uh, contacted us. And I have, and this is another one of those things, just like it was with PMRS, the uh, non uniform pension. I've been trying to, con I have contacted uh, uh, PennDOT going back three weeks ago. I finally talked to them today or got an email from them today. I put the resolution to get together, the resolution you have, that is very similar. We pass a resolution every year for the banners that go up at the corner of Route 22 and 48. Mm -hmm. And I modified that resolution, but I got an email from PennDOT today, and there's a little bit more information that has to go into that resolution. So hopefully, I will have that done for Tuesday night. If not, that may have to be tabled for November also. Tim, this is just for Monroe that have been Correct. banners up, right? Not every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Correct. Uh, and, we can, and we're getting 25 banners for free. Now, what CGI does is the same thing they did, which is on our website, which they did about four years ago, where they solicited businesses to have medallions around the video that features our mayor it has different, it has Dr. Rubino and Mark Hearn from UPMC East Hospital talking about the community, and it's the same company. So they solicit, and there's also, I believe in your packet, is a letter that um, goes out, or came to us, and I think if the letter, no, the letter that uh, we send out is not in there. But we send out a letter notifying the businesses, CGA may be contacting you. I still get phone calls on it when they were doing the video they wanted to know, is this company legit? They're, they're calling us or soliciting us, and, and yes, they are. They're out of Rochester, New York. Uh, so if everything, I get all the information that, um, that PennDOT requires in the resolution, then I'll have that ready for you Tuesday. Question. Any questions on that? Question. Are these pole banners, they seem to go up and they stay up forever. Got them along 22 there uh, by the phone store, by the mattress store. They're up. And they seem to be there for others. Do we have a limit on them? Huh? What are you talking about? Which ones are you referring I'm to? I'm talking about right in front of the mattress store on, uh, on uh, isn't that there? 22 and... Uh, You're talking about the flags. Yeah. Oh, no. Are we we're, these the are banners thing? that are attached to poles. They're about, oh, okay. they're about 15. They ever drive feet. through Murraysville? Eh? Yes. Yeah, they're on Old William okay. Penn Highway in Murraysville. All right. They're there. Um, I'm trying to think of other places. Um, okay, I know what you mean now. Yeah, that's, they're, they're about... Any other questions, Council? No. Okay. No, sir. All right, that's resolutions. Very good. Uh, moving on to our ordinances, we have two this evening. Uh, Mr. Ratcher, please. 
An ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville authorizing the proper officials of Monroeville to enter into a collective bargaining agreement with the Refuse Collection Division of the Department of Public Works for the period of January 2020 through December 2023. Uh, this is currently on the table, and it's my understanding that the administration is recommending that it stay there uh, for now. Tim can probably. Yeah, that's, no, that is correct. We have not heard anything back uh, from the Public Works Union on this issue. Uh, and we're waiting to hear back from them on one issue on the uh, contract. <coughs> so council will look for your direction Tuesday evening. Sure. Next item. An ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, a home rule charter community, amending the code of the municipality of Monroeville and ordinance numbers 2361, 2416, 2520, 2533, 2574, 2598, 2610 and 2657 by amending and restating the rules and regulations of the Civil Service Commission. And this has to do with the hiring of police officers, updating those standards. Um, and Chief Cole can give you more information if required. Thank you. Any questions, Council? Nope. Yep. Very good. Mr. Ratcher. No Any, report tonight. No Thank report. You. Mr. Little. Okay, uh, Tuesday night, the uh, 2022 budget will be uh, presented. And item number two, the uh, recycling event at the Public Works um, on Saturday, October 23rd. That is for hazardous waste uh, and electronics from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. That is on our website. And condolences to uh, Mrs. Gatos and Michael, her husband, on the uh, death of uh, uh, Michael's father. And that concludes my report. Continue with our staff, Mr. Hugis. I'm good, thank you. Ms. Ruck. That's one opinion. Nothing this evening. Very good. And Council will, Mr. Uh, Poach, if you don't mind, if you would start you have a report this evening. Just to, again to echo what uh, uh, Tim was saying, our sympathies go out to the Gatos family and the sudden loss of uh, Mike's dad. Uh, yeah, too. And um, other than that, I don't think I have anything else for, for now for this Tuesday. Thank you. Mr. Harvey. Uh, just two things. Uh, the first one is my condolences to Linda Gatos and her family. And the second one is, um, Tim, maybe we should announce where the voting poll for 3 1 is getting moved to. Uh, the people in Ward 3, District 1, that used to vote at Monroeville Junior High. Uh, Monroeville Junior High isn't there anymore. <laughs> no, at least part of it. But it's, it's, the poll's been moved, and Tim found from the county. Yeah, it's uh, at the uh, Church of the Resurrection. So we're, we're District 2 and 3 vote on Center Road. District 1's getting moved to there also. Correct. And then other, otherwise, all the other polling places are the same as the May primary. Right. Correct. And that information will be on our website as well. That's all. That's all for this evening? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. Okay. Uh, my sympathies go out to Michael, uh, Linda's husband, and uh, I lost a classmate of mine uh, to the COVID just last Friday, and uh, Chuck Cow, and uh, very sorry for your loss, Chuck. And uh, tomorrow night is Gateway Penn Trafford game. It's the Battle of the Bell. Go Gators. <laughs> there you go. Very good. <laughs> Mr. Wolfram. I have two things. Uh, like the, the one thing that would be considered for Tuesday, I have a petition here requesting a street light down in uh, Service Lane. I have some applicants here that are people here that have signed a petition, again, um, dated 10-1-21 of this year. And again, maybe we can talk about this on Tuesday, again, in consideration for a street light down there. Okay, and the other thing I have is I discussed about putting a no dumping sign up there at the corner of Jerry and I guess you'd have to call it almost point circle where they went back there and logged, what was it, two years ago? They made an access road back there and people are going back there and dumping. Now I was informed that the sign was supposed to be put up. It still wasn't there, so I don't know what, what's going on there. Uh, other than that, I would like to go along and say my condolences to the families and everything up to that. Other than that, that's what I have. Do we know who owns that access road, the property where the access road is? Yes. At the municipality, I believe. No, 
No. no. It's all that. It's we private we property. Had with the right, we had trouble with the logging. Okay. That's where it is. Well, I, let's identify. Let's well, it, it's at the more. end of Jerry. It's a dead end. Like but it's real close to Point Circle Road. Um, okay. It's where the logging, we went in there to do the logging right. in the back of Point Circle Drive. Yeah. We'll have staff take a closer look at it. Okay. Uh, and I, I actually have an, an, one more thing. Uh, I have a request from people on my, my Sandy Drive. They're requesting a stop sign putting up there. I know what's, I just informed today that the, what we would have to go through, I might have to look into yeah. this a little further and see if they still want to go through with that. Again, uh, other than that, I have nothing else. Very good. Mr. Arsenko. Two things, and uh, I'll be fairly quick. Uh, obviously, to the Gatiss family, uh, condolences. Uh, Mike, I'm, my heart goes out to you and Linda. Uh, this Saturday, um, there's a Freedom Fest at our amphitheater, and what it is, it's 10 different churches getting together from all over Monroeville, and I, I believe most of them are from Monroeville. But what they want to do is honor our police, uh, our fire, our first responders, our military, as well as veterans. And it's, uh, there's going to be uh, some food trucks there. There'll be some games for the kids. Uh, it's going to be a fun event, so please consider, uh, and it's from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., this Saturday at our amphitheater, and I think it's certainly worth your time taking a little zip up that way, because it's all about our freedom and celebrating our first responders. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Very good. Mr. Williams. A couple of things there. Uh, there will be a resident here, uh, council night, uh, for petition for installation of a street light on service lane. So there will be a resident presenting that to council. Uh, my condolences to Michael and Linda Gators and the loss of Michael's father. And I guess that's all I have tonight. Uh, further report uh, at the council meeting. Very good. Thank you. And once again, I'll just reannounce that uh, trick or treating will be on Halloween evening, the 31st of October from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. But once again, we will be talking about that quite a bit. And uh, I would also echo the, uh, my colleagues here and condolences to the Gatos family. With that, I'll seek a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you and good night.